today we're going to talk about record storage and organization, specifically record storage in Calyx units from Ikea. They're one of the more popular ways to store your vinyl record collection. There's good reason for that. They're cheap and they work, particularly if you do it right. And that's the point of today's episode. We're going to give you five helpful hints on how to get the best out of your Calyx system. Helpful hit number one. When you put your Calyx unit together, regardless of what size you've chosen, you're going to see that the outer frame consists of two pairs of boards. It's critical that the solid board be on the bottom and on the top of the unit. You don't want to do it the other way around or you'll end up with a disaster. Refer to your instructions carefully. Our second helpful hint. Using adjustable feet will allow you to get the calyx unit up off of the ground. This is great for not having to bend over so far to get to the bottom shelves. But more importantly, get just above your baseboard. That'll allow you to put the back of the unit flush up against the wall. That provides much greater stability. So that's a critical one. Our third recommendation is when you buy those feet, it's also best to have one in the center. That's the most vulnerable part of the Calyx unit, is that center once everything's loaded down with vinyl. So one under the center will help stabilize the unit just a wee bit more. An alternative to using adjustable feet is a new product from IKEA called a Calyx Underframe. In fact, we learned that IKEA is no longer selling the adjustable feet that we're using. Haven't tried this underframe, but it looks like it would be stable and good for the unit. We'd love to hear from you guys if anyone has tried it. Please comment below. Our fourth recommendation is to utilize some sort of backstop in each of the individual cubes. There's a lot of different ways to do this. What we did was take furring, two by two furring. That's wood strips that are basically, they're actually 1.75 inches square. We cut them to be the, the, the width of each individual cube painted them the same color as our unit, which happens to be black, drilled two holes in them, put a bit of glue on the bottom, inserted screws into each of those holes so they held down nice and tight. We do this for two reasons. One, it allows the records to be a little closer to the front edge of the unit. That makes reading the uh, words on the spine much easier and it makes it easier to take the records in and out. And secondly, if you're relying upon the wall as your backstop for the records, no wall is perfectly flat. So you're going to have some records stick out a little more than others. It looks much nicer and neater if you put a backstop in. A buddy of mine uh, took a, a very budget-minded approach to this, which I thought was pretty creative. He got pool noodles. These are those long styrofoam noodles that kids will play with in pools. They're flotation-type devices. And he cut those to the length of, of each individual cube and then cut them lengthwise and glued them in place. I haven't tried that myself, but I think that's a pretty ingenious solution. And final recommendation is to bolt the actual calyx unit to the wall behind it. That's really important if, if you have little kids about. If a little kid climbs up and it tips over and it's full of vinyl, that's very heavy. So obviously you don't want that. Every calyx unit comes with metal bits in the upper corners that you can mount to the wall. That's the first step. But I would also recommend getting a small angle iron and bolting it to the underside of one of the unit of one of the cubes and into the stud. You, you can't be guaranteed that you're going to hit a stud in those pre-existing corner braces. So uh, a, a third mounting point somewhere in the center so that it goes into the stud is a way to be very sure that that unit is not going to tip over. So let's talk about organizing your collection. Lots of different ways to do that, alphabetically, chronologically, autobiographically. Whoa, that sounds comforting. However you do it, you want to have some sort of divider in between your various sections. We do it by genre, lots of different genres here. And then within each genre, the artists are listed alphabetically and within each artist, the recordings are filed in the order in which the recordings were made, or in the case of composers, when the music was written. But however you do it, there are dividers available uh, online. There are ready-made dividers that you can buy, but I like a DIY approach. Go to your local record store, get down in those 
bins that are generally underneath on the floor where you can maybe get them for 25 cents a piece, please make sure it's a, not, it's a record that nobody really cares about, perhaps a bit scratched up. Put the record in so that it sticks out enough that you can see it and then glue it into place. Once it's glued into place, you can take what's known as a paint pen. It just looks like a thick magic marker, but it actually has a little metal ball inside, much as a can of paint would. And you can draw, you can paint the, uh, right on the, the vinyl surface, whatever you like, A, B, C, D, or in our case, various uh, genres. So that's a nice DIY, cheap DIY method for organizing your records. And we'll do a quick demonstration of how to make one of these. So let's make a new divider. Uh, we looked through all our various genres and I thought, you know, I don't have a genre for bluegrass, yet I have several bluegrass records uh, that are currently residing within the country section. So we're gonna make one for bluegrass. This is the uh, divider that we have for blues. Nothing wrong, by the way, with this Glen Campbell record at all. But if you were to look closely, this is scratched beyond recognition. It, it, it can't, it's unplayable. So that's the kind of records we use. Either those that are scratched up and cannot be played, or in the case of the one we're going to make today, music that you care absolutely nothing about. So the idea, take the record out. You can discard uh, the inner sleeve. We won't be using that. And the idea is to make sure that the record protrudes from the jacket the same amount as every other. So once you do one and you like where, where it stands out from your calyx unit, um, make sure you, you put them all in the exact same place. That's important. You're also going to need uh, some sort of glue. Elmer's will do the trick or any wood glue would work. And then you'll need some sort of pen. I have a couple here. These are paint pens. And listen, they have actual little metal balls in there, as you would expect with a, a, a spray can. So we're going to get this ready to go. I also have a little uh, pad here to make sure that the ink is flowing before you actually try to apply it to the vinyl. First thing you want to do is get some glue into the jacket itself. I'm using Elmer's glue oil. Any wood glue would work as well. Make sure it gets well down in there and then up along the sides as well. You don't need to go too crazy. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but that's about how much glue we like to use. Then before it hardens, <laughs> you want to insert the record and be careful to put it at the same length that you've previously chosen. Same distance out, so they all look even. I use one as a guide. And there you have it. You can put some weight on this and let it dry, um, but frankly, you can also go straight ahead and, and write the whatever it is you're writing on your divider. A through Z, genres, whatever, your choice. Obviously you want to, don't want to put so much glue that it would come out on the edges, which has not happened here. I like to keep a microfiber cloth just to wipe off the section that we're gonna write upon. One other thing to keep in mind when you do right on the vinyl itself with the paint pen, you wanna let that dry before you flip it over. It does take a few, I would give it at least 20, 30 minutes before you flip it over. You'll see it kind of dry, it gets a bit tacky. Do have to get this flowing, so the first thing you wanna do is rattle it up just like you would a can of spray paint, and then it's one of these kind of pens where you can press the tip into the unit itself. That helps get the paint flowing. So you want to do that and make sure it's flowing nicely before you actually apply it to the vinyl. So let's do that. C. 
several moments later. Okay, by the way, if you go to the hobby store uh, and look for these various kind of pens, this one is made by Sharpie, you'll see that they come with various uh, options for tips. Some are rounded, some are more chiseled, so depending on how fine you want to write the letters or whatever you're writing on the vinyl, choose the appropriate tip. This is kind of a medium rounded tip. So I like to, there you go. Once you get it going and the paint starts to flow out, now you know it's at the tip. You don't want it to goop up though and, ha and pool. So make sure it's flowing nicely before you apply it to the record. Okay, and uh, we decided that this is going to be bluegrass. So kind of think of how it's gonna fit on there. I'm gonna go like this. Okay, there you go. I can't think of a better use for a Barbra Streisand album, huh? Uh, sorry if you're a Barbra Streisand fan, I just am not. But let that side dry and then put the same thing on the other side and there you go. For 25 cents or whatever you would pay for a record like this, you have a pretty cool DIY divider. Good luck with it, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you at the next record.